Hello and welcome to another macro video. Uh, we've got six new macros to look at today and uh, we start off with one called borders to text. This started when somebody asked me was it possible using find and replace to add borders around some text so she wanted to be able to uh, put these borders around particular words in the document. I looked into it and found that no, uh, well I couldn't find any way of doing it with find and replace directly so I had to use um, a bit of subterfuge and what I decided to do was to apply uh, use find and replace to apply a particular attribute to the words required and then use a macro to change those particular attributes into um, the bordering sounds a bit complicated, easier just to show you. So um, I'm using uh, Fredit to uh, add the words we want uh, or rather the, um, the formatting we want. So let's have a sandbox to play in. Uh, let's take this um, as our sample text and let's pop a um, copy in there. Another copy just to see it twice. Um, Okay, now uh, we want to use these two uh, items, these Freddit items, to apply. Uh, if I pop them at the top here, and it becomes a Freddit list. So I'm uh, what the, the, what Freddit is doing here is looking for the word macros and replacing it with the same thing, i just not changing it, uh, but at the same time adding an underline because that, as you can see, that line is underlined and also adding a turquoise highlight and then it finds Paul Beverly and uh, replaces it with the same thing but adds underline and uh, light grey. So if we run um, that, if we run Fredit then it does that find and replace and puts those on there so then my macro borders add to text it will look at the, look through the whole text, it will find highlighted words that are also underlined and it will apply uh, a border to them. So if I run the macro, so it's called uh, borders to text, so the text run. Okay, so it's um, it's changed the, the the turquoise highlighting into a blue line and the red uh, the um, grey highlighting into a dotted red. Uh, you can um, decide what uh, particular types of bordering you want and that's set in the macro itself. So uh, just to speed it up even further um, because Fredit can actually run macros I can kind of cheat um, and if I add a do macros border to text then I can um, do it all in one go. So if I do the same thing again get my a text I want to play with and get rid of that and place a copy, a couple of copies of that text. There we go. Um, so now we can run Fredit. Here's our Fredit list again. We run Fredit and it changes uh, into the highlight and the underline and then so if we undo that so you can see the other things that it's done in the past. So it's done all those. Right, anyway, so within the macro itself, if we find it, um, BOR, was the text, edit, then in the, uh, the text here you've got all the different colours of highlighting and you've got a uh, single, um, single line, you've got different widths, uh, there's a 300, a uh, single wavy. So if I give you an example, uh, let's put it away a minute. Uh, down here we've got some text, so let's put that in the sandbox. Open it out a bit. Um, if I run borders to text now, BOR, border to text, there we go, run. As you can see, we've got lots of different styles, some with kind of shading on them and different colours and dotted and double. So you can play around. Uh, you know, if you want to try different uh, different styles of uh, borders, but the the basic ones, you know, just straight lines around is probably what you're going to want most of the time. So that's that one. Uh, oh, but it, of course, if you want to take the borders off, 
then you've got uh, a macro that will do that so just make another copy of that um, so um, what's it called it was called borders all off so um, I've got that on a keystroke so let's do it from the keystroke so the way it works is if you select some text and run the macro then it will remove the borders from that bit of text but if nothing is selected if the cursor is just in the in the document there and then we run it it says remove borders from whole text and if we say yes then it will take all the borders off from all of the uh, whole text okay so that's that macro so what's next uh, comment uh, brackets to bubbles yes okay um, someone had got comments in the text which was uh, put in square brackets and they wanted to be able to um, take those out into uh, comment bubbles or vice versa I can't remember which way around it was um, but I, I wrote the macro for the, for the one way around and then I thought well I might as well do the macro the other way around as well so um, if what have we got here we've got comments so if we want to go from comment bubbles to brackets um, if I run that one run comment bubbles run okay so it's it's taken the comments out it's put them in the text where the uh, line was the lead line was um, from and it's put them in there so and it's put in a, it's put it in bold and uh, highlight which is a, an option uh, so if we go the other way and run that one then it says it's done 23 comments oh there must have been other comments in the um, uh, I know other square brackets in the um, in the document but anyway ignore that uh, and we're supposed to have done these three uh, yep that's fine so it's um, you can either have the comments in bubbles or in square brackets so that's that one uh, now Vancouver citation is the next one. Oh, we've got all these I now understand hold on a second Right, I should have rehearsed that, shouldn't I? Um, what happened was we had these uh, va uh, Vancouver citations in square brackets and uh, I should have run my little test in a, a sandbox rather than in this main file. Anyway, right, uh, Vancouver citation. Uh, we've already got a macro from some time ago which will produce uh, a list of all the citations, uh, Vancouver citations in a document. So it would produce a list like that and the latest version actually um, adds a little bit of highlighting uh, in on the spaces so you can actually just check the formatting and you, you know you might have you might have the might have a hyphen in there and so you know immediately that uh, you can see that those hyphens need to be um, put <coughs> and changed into n dashes uh, right so that is one way of checking them but the other, the other so you, you're checking whether they're all in order so you can go down but uh, it may be that it'd be useful I decided uh, to see whether there are any missing from the from the list so Vancouver all cited is uh, a macro I've just done which produces this uh, format so in other words what it's done is created a numerical list of all those citations and because it's a numerical list you can look down very easily and quickly and just check that there is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to 11 yeah all of the all of the numbers are cited so that's okay it's just a, a useful extra test uh, right now the last one uh, for now is a, a macro called word graph and I had to spend quite a bit of time explaining in words in the book what this does um, but actually all I do is run the macro and you'll see very very quickly what it does so if I say run word graph and run it no don't run it just uh, get it up there for the moment um, what I want to do is to uh, select a word um, something like thank and if I run it now, if I run word graph, I'll run it from there, run, it produces this strange looking thing. 
and what this is is a copy of my original document so there's my document with uh, six new macros uh, here we go uh, macros, 62 macros it has done two things it has shrunk the the, the, um, the view and it has the word that I had highlighted which was thank it has found that word wherever it occurs and made it big so what's the point um, it's it's creating what I might call a graph of that word it's creating a, a graph of the word thank and so in other words you can see where that word is used in the document there might be different reasons for doing that uh, it might be the name of a character in a novel or some chemical in a technical document or uh, a statement in a, a legal document um, but uh, anyway that's uh, that's there that's ready to use oh well if we, if we just oh yes if I um, if I run the macro again so that's uh, what was it um, word graph there it is run at this time I had not selected anything so it doesn't know what I want to um, to graph so if I say macro as my word then it will uh, so I can input a word or a phrase rather than just selecting it and as you can see it's uh, this, that word occurs a fair amount and of course if you uh, zoom it further out you can see a, a, an overall view of the document um, so that you can see what's going on there um, I've just remembered that actually there are seven new macros and so I've just been busy behind the scenes setting up another demonstration uh, that's duplicate sentence count and the idea of that one is to find if any sentences in the document are duplicated and if so to count how many times they occur so with fingers crossed I'll try to run this one uh, which is DUPL duplicate sentence count run and off it goes looking through all the sentences and comparing them Yep, and it's magically found three of those, sen that sentence occurs three times, that, that sentence occurs twice, and that sentence occurs twice. Uh, obviously, as it's comparing every sentence with every other sentence, it's going to be a long, slow job if it's uh, a big document. But hopefully that should be useful. Um, okay, so that's it for now. Um, so there we go, that was uh, our seven new macros. Thanks for watching.